Senator Orrin Hatch joins us now from Salt Lake City. And uh, Senator, I know that you sit on the Judiciary Committee, which is the first step toward the Senate holding a hearing and then a vote. Uh, what do you make of Mitch McConnell and other Republicans saying that the Senate should not move forward on any of President Obama's nominees? Well, let me start with uh, some of the comments that the president said about the nom uh, nomination of judges, uh, because Pre Mitch McConnell has been the majority leader for the year and a half now, and or a little over a year, and, and uh, frankly, he indicated that they can't get people through at all. Well, keep in mind, George W. Bush, in his whole eight years, got 296 judges approved. This president has already had 323 in his, by his seventh year. In other words, many more. So there's nobody stopping his judges uh, from going through, but they are strictly observed and very carefully observed because these are lifetime appointments. Now, having got, now, now get down to the Supreme Court. The president in the last year of his term, which has never really happened before, except, uh, except uh, uh, you might say that uh, Kennedy, who, who was uh, more than a year, uh, you know, was picked, but he was picked after a whopping fight where they defeated two, they, they basically defeated two other candidates for, uh, for, the, uh, for the job. And there was one other time in, in 1916 when Chief Justice uh, Hughes uh, decided to leave the court <laughs> to run for president. But other than that, there's been no putting forth of Supreme Court justices during the final year of the president. Now look, here's the problem, and here's why Mitch McConnell is right. As you can see, it's already very, very political. The president basically is challenging on a political basis. He has admitted that it is political. And the fact of the matter is, we're talking about some of the most important positions in the history of our country, and in this case, the most, uh, you know, the most important pr provision in some ways. And uh, all I can say is that, is that uh, Mitch McConnell wants to get this out of, and so do I think Republicans, want to get this out of this really rabid, terrible political environment where everybody's throwing uh, things around, yeah. and get it to the, next, uh, to the next president, whoever that president may be. But the, he may but very right well now, be the, a Democrat. But Senator, right now, right now, the president is Barack Obama. And what you're suggesting and what the Republicans so? are and what the Republicans are suggesting is that in the final year of a presidency that 25% of that president's administration should be ineligible to nominate a Supreme Court nominee. And just to correct the facts here in 1912, we're just looking since 1900, President William Taft nominated uh, Pitney. In 1960, 16, President Woodrow Wilson nominated Louis Brandeis and John Clark. In 1932, President Hubert Hoover nominated Benjamin Cardoza. In 1940, President Franklin Roosevelt nominated Frank Murphy. In 1987, President Ronald Reagan nominated Anthony Kennedy. Uh, those are just since 1900. So it's not, it's not accurate that in the final year of a presidency that nominees, nominees don't get put forward and that they don't get appointed to the Supreme Court. Now, let me ask you. Well, just so we get it straight, the, the just so we get it yes, straight, sir. Kennedy was, was nominated uh, well in advance of the last year of the presidency. The fact of the matter is, is that, is, is that uh, is that there was a reason why everybody was glad to get it over with at that time. Right now, nobody's glad to get it over with, other than Democrats who want to get an advantage. And they can get that advantage by winning the presidency. I think McConnell is absolutely right, and, and frankly, the only way we're going to get, get peace on this type of process is to have it be a fair process, not one that's just rammed up the noses of Republicans in the last year of a president that, uh, that has put a lot of very, very left-wing people on the federal courts throughout this country. Well, they were approved, and this is but, but, this, but the Senate... Well, but in the all Senate... those prior years, just so you get this, in all those prior years, there wasn't the controversy. There wasn't the problems that we have now. There wasn't the politics that we have now. In some cases, you might say there was some, but nothing like we have today. We want to get it out of politics and get it to where the next president, be he a Democrat, or a Republican will be able to make whatever appointment they want to make, and hopefully that appointment will go smoothly. That's, I, I think that's all that Senator McConnell has said, and absolutely right on it. 
Senator Hatch, the president says it is his constitutional obligation to nominate someone to replace uh, Justice uh, Scalia's seat right. on that the... Is, Go ahead. And that is right. He has an absolute right to make any uh, nomination that he wants to. Not a right, a responsibility. He calls it a wait, responsibility. Wait, 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 wait a second. On the other side of that coin is the Senate has an absolute right whether to confirm or not confirm. And that's where a lot of people are missing it. They think because the president nominates somebody, he has an absolute right to just shove it down the noses of everybody. The fact of the matter is he doesn't. And the Senate has to be considered here too. And I think Senator McConnell is right because he wants to get it out of this political mess that we're in this year. The worst that I've seen in my 40 years in the Senate and not get into an even greater political mess in the process. When we could do justice by waiting till the election's over in the next year and if it's a Democrat, that Democrat's going to be able to appoint whoever he or she wants. In this case, probably can she. I, can I just and ask? The, if it's a Republican, they'll be because able to you, Because uh, you put sit her. on the Judiciary Committee, though, look, in yeah. your view, is it your yeah. Senate responsibility by the Constitution to hold a hearing and a vote? No. It's, not, it's, not, uh, it's up to us to make that determination whether we're going to confirm at this time. And if we have really good reasons, which we do, for not confirming at this time because it is such a political morass and mess in this country right now and, and because, because we know it's going to be politicized no matter what we do and we want to get it to where this is respectfully a, a process that, that really will work and, and will be fair and both sides can walk away and say, well, yeah. we did our best. Yeah, I, I, yeah we, don't have, we don't have any obligation to take the president's nominee if we don't want to. And the fact of the matter is, sooner or later, this has to be resolved, and next year is a, a good time to do it. Senator Lindsey Graham suggests that he thinks the Senate, both Republicans and Democrats, could coalesce around a nominee if the nominee was you. Could you, sir? <laughs> well, let, let's put it this way. I'm, in March, I'll be 82 years of age. I, I don't want all my Democrat friends praying for my demise. <laughs> But I, I'll tell you, if they did pick me, I'll tell you this, I'd make sure I lived another 20 years just to spite them. But uh, no, that's, that's uh, I appreciate Lindsay uh, saying that. And, uh, but it does show that I know what I'm talking about because I've been in this for a long time. I'm so tired of the politicization of the judiciary. I'm so tired of one side putting up the avant-garde liberals, the other side putting up avant-garde conservatives, both sides at each other's throats all the time. And, and if you think that's bad, wait, if we did actually do what the president wants us to do this year in this terrible year where everything is up in, in, in an uproar, my gosh, we deserve what we get. So I, I think we ought to cool this down, make sure that it's fair to both sides, which it would be, yeah. and, and, and do it that way rather than get into an awful fight over a Supreme, a Supreme Court nominee this year. I mean, I, listen... I, I think we ought to respect the judiciary better than trying to ram this up uh, Republicans' noses. Senator Hatch, uh, President Obama was asked about the 2016 race, and he responded that he truly believes that Donald Trump will not be the next president, that it's hard work, <laughs> that it's a big responsibility, and it's not a reality show or a promotion. I know that you're backing Governor Jeb Bush in right, the um, right. Republican primaries. We just got a recent uh, CNN poll that has come out. It was taken between the 10th and the 15th of this month. And Jeb Bush is now getting 6% of the support in South Carolina. Uh, do you think that his influence, his support would be better spent um, if, if he were to leave the race and the Republican establishment were able to coalesce around another candidate? Well, they're not going to coalesce until either Trump... Uh, withdraws or uh, some other event occurs. No, I think that uh, Jeb Bush is making headway and frankly, he's the best one of all of them. He has the greatest experience. He was one of the greatest governors in the country. He ran a purple state, Florida. Uh, uh, he ran that as a, uh, you know, as a fiscal conservative. Uh, the people down there loved him and thought he was just great. He, he got the first, you know, he, he balanced the budget for eight years in a row. He, he, uh, he cut spending by $19 billion. He created a, a one and a half million jobs. I mean, by any measure, 
It was one of the most important governorships in the country. It, He'll do the same for this country, and this is early in the process. If he's, uh, if, know, if, we'll if he's not see. able to make a real run at this nomination, do you foresee that you would support Donald Trump or Ted Cruz? Well, if he's not able to make a real run, that's another matter. But we think he will, and we think, uh, we think he has the capacity to. The only problem with Jeb Bush is his last name, and that should not be a problem because Hillary Clinton, what about her last name? The fact of the matter is he's the one who could, I think, beat Hillary Clinton or, or uh, Bernie. I don't mean to uh, cut Bernie out of the picture. He's run a very, very effective race and deserves a lot of credit for it. Look, I, I'd like to cool things down. With regard to judges, I'd like to have us really treat the Supreme Court with respect instead of the all-fired screaming and shouting that we've had over some of these nominees. And that began, by the way, with the Bork nomination. Actually, it began with, with, uh, with a nomination to the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals with a, with a young Hispanic person who was one of the best lawyers in the country. And the Democrats just completely shot him down. And, it, it's and, then, and then came Bork, and uh, here's one of the greatest legal minds this country has ever seen. And, and they just shot him down like he was a nothing burger. And then, uh, of course, Ginsburg came along, and he's, he's been a remarkable judge on the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. And they shot him down. So finally, Kennedy came along, and he's a wonderful man. I, I like him personally. We're close personal friends. Kennedy, uh, I think everybody's so tired of it, they finally uh, took J uh, Justice Kennedy. Kennedy and, and, uh, and, and, and I've got to say, since then, we have had nothing but a deterioration of, of, uh, of feelings among various senators, and we've had nothing but politicization in some of these seats, and especially on the Supreme Court. And I'd like to get it away from that. I think so would Senator McConnell. And the fair way to do this, above all the fair way, and I'd like to not destroy the integrity of the court by getting into an all-fired stupid battle in the middle of this all-fired stupid presidential election that, that's eating us all alive. And the best way to do that is put it over and whoever wins, it could be a Democrat, it could be a Republican, will then have the right to make that appointment. That's reasonable, that's smart. That's, that's something that hopefully will cool this all down and get us to respect our country, the Supreme Court, the whole judiciary, like we all should. And, and that's what I'm after right now. I, uh, I get along well with my Democrat friends. I like them, care for them, and, and want to work with them. But my gosh, all we're going to have is a doggone brouhaha for the rest of this year uh, if, if, if we don't listen to Senator McConnell, and I think we will listen to him, and I hope people realize, and, and keep in mind, there are a lot of very important things here. You're talking about, if, if a Democrat wins, you're talking about a, about a religious freedom. You're talking about free speech. You're talking about the Second Amendment, right, to keep and bear arms. You're talking about abortion yeah, the, issues. Yeah, a lot of I very... Mean, th these are all b buzz issues that literally, I'd like to and cool down the political rhetoric and get, get these things so that we can come together and resolve these problems. You're not going to get them. By putting up a Democrat in this particular uh, in this particular uh, year, it's just I, I'm very concerned about it. I think Sen our country's going to be very badly hurt if we get into a big brouhaha over Supreme Court justice. Senator Hatch, it's so good of you to join me and to spend so much time uh, with your insight about the Judiciary Committee and what comes back next for the Senate. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Well, sorry to interrupt you, but from time to time, I, I apologize for that. And usually, I'm. I'm, I'm much, uh, much better and softer, but, but this, you can see how I get worked up. You can I imagine know. what it's going to be like. You can imagine what it's going to be like if we don't, uh, if we don't really uh, handle this thing right. And, and I think Senator McConnell is, is shrewd and smart and absolutely right on this rather than go through this uh, process in this really, really uh, bad political year. It's great of you to join us. Thank you, Senator Hatch. Great to, great to be with you.